All right, back here live in Austin for Linux Foundation Open Source Summit. We've got our JFrog folks. We're back to back here. We're going to be doing a few interviews. Um, I want to introduce you. To, he's a new frog. You can <laughs> tell he's not that green yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> his name is Peter McKee. And, and Peter, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, kind of honored to be breaking you in here yeah. on, on the techstrongdevops.com. First time. Yeah, Newbie. your first time. I think we've only lost. Well, no, we haven't. <laughs> um, but Peter, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, my name is Peter McKee. I run the developer advocacy team at JFrog. Hard word to say. I should practice it more. But yeah, uh, I came from Docker, was there for about five years, ran the community and DevRel teams there. Mm -hmm. um, super excited to come over to JFrog. Great people, great products. Yeah. Absolutely. It's funny, we were just talking. Our last guest was uh, Jeff from IBM. And we did like a quick history of Kubernetes and talked about Docker and Swarm and all of that stuff. Oh boy. Yeah, there, there, there was some history there. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people look at this and say, yeah, dev, dev advocacy. A lot of us think that's the new salespeople, yeah. right? Because yeah. we don't do salespeople, we do DevRel and dev advocacy. And, and your job is to just make sure the software is delivering delight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I tell people, I tell my advocates, I want people to know, like, and love you, right? And Three L's. Or yep. no, know, like, and love. Two L's yeah. and a K. And a K. <laughs> yeah. You can tell spelling wasn't I went to private thing. school, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but yeah, and I think it's one of the best jobs in the world, right? You still get to uh, talk and speak and connect with the community, but you can still also write code, contribute to open source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think nowadays software's eating the world. Right, and software engineers are the new king makers. No, none of my terms. Absolutely. You know, but, um, yeah, and but is it liquid? It, it better be. It, it should, should be. be. It will be. It will be if we have our way. You're going to be here, man. <laughs> you got to be saying it will be. That's right. It will be. All right. Yeah. Um, and just kidding with you. Yeah, Peter, no worries. You know. yeah, yeah. But you know, when we talk about JFrog, it, it's look. I will tell you, is I, I started DevOps.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of software companies that I'm fond of, right, who I think do a good job. JFrog's one of, in my mind, dollar for dollar does the best job of balancing being a, a, a for-profit company while nourishing a thriving community. Yeah. And if you do it right, you can do both well and be successful at it. And I think yeah. Shlomi and Fred and Yov and the whole team there have are a, a shining example of it. I'm interested to know you coming from Docker. Like, what do you know about the JFrog software? What attracted you to this position? You know, it's not that they pay yeah. a lot more than everyone else does. Well, they do. No, I'm just kidding. No, they <laughs> don't. I know. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, well, no, well, number one, the team is phenomenal. And then we had Artifactory at Dell. I was at Dell many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in 08, 09, we had Artifactory, which was completely a new concept, yeah. right? And to be honest, right, it took a little bit of, why are we doing it, what are we, and until you get it, then you get it, right? And I think it was that, a combination of the products, the people, and then their open source initiative, right, of Persia and the, and the different Conan and different projects we're doing. Like you said, I think they have a great pulse on the community. They basically started the DevOps movement, right? It, it's kind of like Docker started the containers movement changed how we run our run times and DevOps has changed the way we deliver software. Yeah, and it I, really it's is. a great stable company that I want to be part of, take it to the, to the next level, right? Yeah, and so that's so why I, I It's interesting, I, I think of JFrog's mission, especially as it relates to open source, there's, there's like two sides of that open source coin. One is JFrog does a really, or tries to, and I think does do a really good job of securing open source software. Mm -hmm. Right, so a lot of the stuff in Artifactory is open. Yeah. Right, and and using X-ray and other tools, you know, they're securing these open source software. At the same time, JFrog also, and and I think more recently than in past, has been a, a progenitor, a producer of open source software. Mm -hmm. Right, with some of the projects you just mentioned, and we're going to dive more into them with our next guest, even, but. Um, 
It's interesting. You don't see a lot of companies no. that play both sides of that street. Yeah, I don't, I don't think most companies understand that, right? Mm -hmm. they, I think they feel if they give away their technology, they're, they're, they're going to lose, right? They're going to lose their advantage. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I think JFrog, going back to the dev advocates too, right? It's give back to the community, make people happy. And then when they have a choice, they're going to come to you, right? They start to see you as leaders in the industry, thought leaders. I hate that term, but it's true, right? Mm -hmm. And I think JFrog does a fantastic job about that, especially around DevOps and other things is, hey, we want to help you wherever you're at. And if you want to come to us and pay us, we'd love that also. But we know eventually you'll find the right product and hopefully it's ours, right? But we want you to be successful first. Got it. Yeah, I think that's given, and it's that open source mentality to give back to the community, right? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, you know, I forgot to hit the start button here, but I'm going to assume about where we are. Let me ask you what maybe seemed like an obvious question, but not. What are you doing here at the Open Source Summit? I'm just here to support the community and, um, yeah, support our open source projects. I'm looking over at uh, Steve, but, yeah, and I live here. I'm here in Austin, local, so I can't, can't miss the conference. Oh, you're, well, yeah, you're yeah. here. And that come down and uh, I call it, you know, shaking hands and kissing babies and building relationships with folks. Are yeah. you uh, up on what's going on with this software supply chain security? And I am, but I'm not a security professional, so I got to be careful. But I am a developer, right? And it's interesting, you know, back in the day, we, uh, we were just talking last night. Uh, so I worked on Dell.com. We were on HTTP. Right. I've written software where you log in, you're passing the, the, the password and the username in the URL, in unencrypted. The right? yeah. That's, and, we uh, all did. Yeah. yeah it was, and so I think developers, we caused a lot of this for our uh, you know, trust first kind of approach. And now we're all, now we're all need to go back and fix it. So I love the shift left because I, I think we caused a lot of it, the developers, and we need to be an integral part of fixing it, right? Yeah, but you know something I've... So so I was never a developer. I come from security. I'll make a confession. I used to think developers <laughs> didn't give a crap about security. Now we're getting into the conversation. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so I used to think that we'll never have good secure software because developers don't give a crap about security. Yeah. But since my time in DevOps for the last eight years, whatever, uh, nine years, I've come to the realization that no one raises their hand and says, I want to deliver insecure software. Right. Or I, I can't wait to develop some software that's full of holes. Right. Right. Everyone has pride in, in their you know, ownership of what they do. Yeah. It's just a question of what your priorities are and what the state of the art is. Yeah. You, know, you talk about passing stuff in, in, in the URL you know, chain. That was the state of the art then. Yeah. People weren't thinking about, wow, man in the middle attacks, how do I jump that, you know, and all, right. all of these things. And, and IE, not to cut, sorry. No, no, Just go. think about the Internet Explorer, right? When you used to download. We de demised the yeah. Internet Explorer. Which they should have blown that thing out. But yeah. yeah and uh, yeah, oh, down something, just automatically execute it because it's good for the end user. And it, that was great for my parents, you know, 30 years ago when they weren't computer people. Now it's horrible, right? And we again set ourselves up for it. But yeah, I agree. I think the honestly, I didn't give two pennies about security when I was, uh, you know, 15 years ago, frontline developer. Uh -huh. I was worried about hitting my features and my deadlines. And then, then the secu then you folks would walk in when we're going to production the day of the launch. You know, go so no go. No, you're not. Wait a minute, we didn't do all the security yeah, stuff. You got right? compliance issues here. Yeah, and you, you had. Want to go to jail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those guys. Yeah, and it was an adversarial type was of very much. roles, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, now I think that's starting to blend, and we do software differently, to your point. We, we absolutely, well, I think that's been the, yeah. so that's, you know, when we look at what's going on at this show, and it's a little quiet now because it's later in the day, but look, every person we're talking to is talking about software supply chain security and the OSSF and, and all of these things. In my mind, None of that's possible without what DevOps has done to change the way yeah, we build software. We, we went from people like you just sitting on coding, like building what we call, let's call it bespoke software, yeah. right? Custom written software for a given project to a factory, to yeah. an assembly line, to a pipeline, right? Where we, we just add in third party parts like we're building a car. Yeah. Right. Deming and, and, and all of that, you know, lean IT yeah. and lean manufacturing. If you didn't have all of that, you wouldn't have an open SSF. You right. wouldn't have, 
You, would, you didn't have a software supply chain, so what do you got to worry about software right, right. supply chain security? Yeah, no, it was me. It was me uh, launching into production yeah. and then fixing it. Well, into production. I was selling security back yeah. then, and you know we had a vulnerability management tool that I was trying to convince people that you should scan your infrastructure once a year, <laughs> once a year. <laughs> Can you imagine? And it was a hard fight. It was a hard. Right. It was a hard sell. Yeah. That, yeah. you, know, you know, because they just thought it was a bad news generator. They didn't want to know about yeah. it until, yeah. you know, until crap hit the fan. Then they wanted to know about yeah. it. But, um, you know, it, I, I really, you know, I blame DevOps. Yeah. And um, I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, it accelerated. It made things easier. And then it, just, then it exposed, oh, wait a minute. We, we got to get better at plugging holes, attacking security. But, yeah. On some sense, software engineering has become easier, but then on the other sense, it's become way, way more complex. Well, I think there's Extremely more straws on the developer's back today. Yeah, yeah. Right, there's more Own things. production, code, code to cloud, right? Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's a big thing. We haven't even, look, you're gonna start seeing edge stuff come in and, and all of this other stuff. Let me ask you another question. How long are you with JFrog? What, about eight weeks now? Okay. Somewhere around there. It's long eight enough. Hours. Yeah, uh oh. Um, what is, if I'm talking to you six months from now, what does success look like for, beyond saying, oh, the company sold more software or something, that's obvious, but yeah. what does success for you personally look like? For, for me personally right now is to have our free product, everybody using Artifactory. Go try it out, get a free trial, use it, understand wh why you should use it, and bring that into your DevOps practices, right? Try it out. And eventually, you're going to love us, you're going to like us, and you're going to come purchase. But just use the software as you do now. If, if I can help get more people to know, like, and love our products, get to use them, and maybe not even pay yet. Let, uh, the sales folks will take care of that down the road, right? But if we have really good technology and people are using them, they're going to stick around and pay, right? And so I think my team's job is to show people that, right? So if we can do that and I can help raise the weekly users of our free tier, Success for me. That's what it's success. I think one of the, yeah, it's one of the key things. Success. After eight weeks, biggest difference between the culture of J Frog and Docker, and I'm not asking you to bad mouth, um, no yeah. but <laughs> differences between J Frog and Docker being uh, friendly to everyone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <coughs> Docker is a phenomenal company, right? Phenomenal people. I didn't stay there as long as I did. I mean, the technology was incredible, but yeah, the folks were wonderful. I mean, smart, empathetic people, and I found the same at J Frog. Probably even more so. JFrog yeah. folks are awesome. Yeah, I mean, that culture, they, they care about their people, truly care about their people. Not only, you know, are you productive and happy, but are you happy? Then you will be productive, right? And it's, it's a subtle difference, but I think it's key, right? Yeah, everybody I've met at the company is fantastic. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Peter, it was a pleasure, pleasure meeting, meeting you. you. Best of luck with yeah. JFrog, man. You're with some good people. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. We're going to come. have you come back in Absolutely. six months and tell you how you did here. You see if I hit my KPIs? Well, <laughs> whatever, makes, whatever makes you happy. All right. Or Shlomi, <laughs> one or the it. other. Um, all right. Peter thank McKee, so new Appreciate developer it. advocate here at JFrog.